Thanks very much, Nicola. I'll hand over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Susie. So I presume, just give me the thumbs up, Susie, that the screen's all right. Yep, brilliant. So it's lovely to see you all. And if you are um, watching on catch up because you read chess and decided it was just too grotty a day to come and join us live then I hope you enjoy it so yeah thanks for taking the time to come along this morning it's really nice to have you here we are obviously a small group so please feel free you know to be as interactive as you want to be if you want to come off mute when I ask for input because I am going to be asking for some input and um, thoughts from you you're welcome to come off mute or you can use the, the chat box I've got it open now as well so I'll keep an eye on it as we go and um, I always just like to say you know let's make this a safe space that we all feel comfortable sharing because things like this sometimes do bring up some maybe emotions or different thoughts so I want everyone to just feel comfortable to ask any questions and, and feel safe um, and secure given you know your thoughts and feedback so this is a really great workshop that I've developed to use today specifically for this people series when I'd been speaking to Dawn she was really keen for us to focus on women's health and because I know that in the industry Dawn and, and Susie are part of you know women in the workplace is a real challenge in both retaining and recruiting women and, and keeping that talent so, you know, this is important whether you're here as an individual or you're here as part of your role in, in perhaps your own business or workplace. So we are at a really critical point in our society and economic timeline because of the shifts that we're rapidly seeing in the growing population of women of a working age and the huge shift in the age that women are expected to work to. So, you know, this has shifted from being around, well, 60 in around 2010 to currently 66, and it's expected to rise. They've moved the date forward again, so I wouldn't be too surprised if this shifts even earlier than 2035, where women are expected to work up to 68-year-old. Now, parallel to these changes, we are facing huge risks in women's health that pose very real and threatening impacts to our economic and cultural needs and the progress that we are, you know, making towards gender equality and equity. So I want you to walk away today being really clear about why women's health matters and to know why you need to value yourself and to be inspired by the ripple effect that comes from taking care of yourself. So I think we should probably take about 40 minutes or so to go through the content. And there is time over in there, as I say, for you to get involved with some reflection and questions. And then we'll have plenty of time at the end if anyone wants to ask any individual questions. So I want to start by asking you to just take a few moments to consider this question and think about your health right now. How do you prioritize your health? Do you actually prioritize it? You know, think about when I'm asking this question, what feelings come up? And if you want to use the chat box, please, you know, if you are comfortable sharing anything, I'd love you to share. So, you know, I'm really keen to get you thinking about whether you are prioritizing your health. Do you even give it any thought? You know, is it something that you're aware of in the way that you live? And maybe you are trying to do things to improve your health or is it just not on your radar at all? And again, these type of questions I'm asking now are ones that you can do more reflection on outside of this session. If, if you know, you enjoy the session and what we're talking about, the ones that can be really thought provoking and helpful to do a little bit of, of thinking on. Um, so Sue Singh, yeah, trying to build in rest. So that's good. I know you mentioned you've got a couple of children, younger ones. So rest can be challenging, as we all know, um, you know, especially when when kids are young. So just think about what healthy living really means to you. And I often um, use this example of there's kind of three different types of people, I believe, when it comes to thoughts on health. The first is that there's the kind of there's no point worrying about it. You're a long time dead. You know, um, life's for living. It's sort of that camp of, you know, I don't want to be boring and restrictive and worry about my health. I'm just going to go all out and live. Then you've got the second type who lives with 
fear of it because they know that their health could go wrong at any time and you know could mean that things really change for them in their life but they just get on with their life and think you know I'll get to it one day hopefully before something goes wrong so it's kind of there at the back of the mind and then the third is someone who does place value on the health they know that it's important it's not something that you know sits over them as, as a fear or a dark cloud that that is um you know negative thing it's they embrace it because they're intentional about wanting to live a great life so they know if they nurture and invest in their health now then they will live a good life think about that are you one two or three Susie's saying the second type yeah so it's there it's kind of which I think is very common people especially if you've experienced a health challenge with someone close to you I think that's often what the example I gave is you know for that second type and, and even the first one it's only when something happens either to you and gives you a health scare or somebody close to you is impacted that something shifts and I say this a lot with with people um Helen was saying yeah try to um focus on health but it's hard finding enough time between demands of work and home which time is the biggest challenge that I have people tell me about when when they come to work with me it's always about time and then think about the gap between the reality and how you'd like to prioritize your health so if you you know were to um do a blue sky approach what would health look like to you in your life what would your lifestyle be like and think about that gap and that's really important in you know trying to then focus on the right things for you to improve the way that you feel so again you know these are really good questions that you can think about when you have more time if you want to but really think about how your health is now what your thoughts are about health and how much of a role it plays in you as a person your values in your life and if you had the opportunity to live healthier what would that look like and what is the gap and we're going to come back to this near the end as well so just you know keep this in mind so we're here today to explore the challenges that we're facing with so many women holding themselves back from living the life that they want to and achieving the success they desire whether that's in their career or personal lives and this is creating gender gaps in the boardroom and on leadership teams. And it's swaying the male balance in entrepreneurship and in innovation funding, as well as modelling to girls that it's OK to not value yourself and put yourself first by investing in you and your health. Now, it, it's vital that women build their self-worth and self-belief so that they can, you know, have the success that they desire. So I want us to help empower ourselves and all females to live a life where they believe in themselves and feel confident to take steps so that they do then feel successful and happy. So I'm going to help you to see that the way you take care of yourself impacts the way you feel about yourself. And when you do prioritise your health and well-being, that that does build your self-belief and self-worth and confidence. And then from that, you can improve and shift the way you feel about yourself so that you're really getting control of your life. So whether you're here for you or for your team and business, you will walk away understanding the health risks that all women are facing because they aren't equipped with the right knowledge and support and, and that's a huge challenge that we have globally with women's health is that awareness and understanding because there is um, a very big discrepancy between the focus that goes into study and research for men's health versus women's health. There's lots of things that come into that. We'll touch on it a bit of that next. Um, and I really want you to then, from that understanding of, of risks to women's health, understand that downstream impact that this has on you and your future life. And then because of that, on what it is you're trying to achieve, whether that's for yourself, your business, your organization, and so on. So when you understand your health and how it impacts the way you feel and live each day, and then from that, you know that it can impact your health span by being in control of the way you live. You can begin to then get clear about what matters to you with your health and how you want to feel. So back to those questions I just asked, when you know what um, you've got more understanding of women's health and why it matters, and then what you're looking for, then you can start to build a plan as to how you're going to get there 
And it's all about taking small steps to build sustainable, healthy habits. And I focus on that word sustainable. So you'll hear me use that quite a bit today because this isn't a short term fix. This isn't about dropping a dress size for summer or, you know, going to the gym for a few weeks and you feel better and think, oh, this is too much hard work. This is about sustainable living. It's about you you know, feeling healthy for life. There is no finish line with health. It's not an end goal. You know, health is a state that that we want forever. So um, the, the great thing is that when you feel this, when you start to feel your self-worth, self-belief build by taking better care of your health, it has such a huge ripple effect that you want more of it. And that's when it becomes, you know, much easier both because you've got the habits, but also because of how you feel to want to continue living that way and want to be strong throughout your life. So I focus on living life now and living a fulfilled and happy life because I've had my own struggles with mental and physical health for over 28 years, which impacted my health and happiness for the majority of my adult life. So I think I know some of you, but I'm Nicola Mercer and I founded Life Now Coaching um, just over 20 months ago. And previous to that, I worked in corporate for 23 years and I was at Nike for 20 years. And I hid my crippling anxiety and low self-confidence for all of those years. I lived in fear. I was always waiting to be found out, to be found that I wasn't good enough and for my world to fall apart. And then I was made redundant early in 21 and I had a total life reset and I experienced a few changes and challenges personally and some actually health related in the kind of few years before I was made redundant and all of those things had come together so that when I was faced with redundancy I took it as a real moment of opportunity it was like right you know I'm, I'm 45 I don't feel as though I've been enjoying my life. I've been surviving and this is it. Now's my time. I'm going to, you know, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have a plan B, but I knew that I needed to change. So I set my own business, qualified as a PT, certified as a coach, and then started to call myself an entrepreneur and transformational health coach, which felt very strange. And the healthy habits that I'd started to build into my life the few years previous to that they've become my framework for what I teach and coach now. So I'm a mom, got a beautiful 15 year old daughter, you can see there, I'm a partner and I'm a woman with a big vision and purpose. I really want to normalize healthy habits so that kids grow up valuing themselves to live a healthy, happy life. And I support people like you to embed sustainable, healthy habits into their lives so that you feel empowered to live a great life and most importantly, help those you love to do the same. And I know through my journey that when you build these habits and you have that lifestyle, then you feel strong overall in your well-being, your happiness. And that, to me, is what brings the success that, that we all want. And as I say, that ripples out. So, you know, you feel motivated, energized, vibrant, you build your resilience. It's, it's a long list. And it's proven that health and happiness are linked so you know the healthier you are the happier you feel and likewise the happier you feel that directly impacts both your physical and mental health so it's a never-ending cycle and I truly believe that you know women can feel strong and believe in themselves by taking better care of themselves and that when they do you know that has such a massive you know positive impact on the lives of others whether that's your own family your social network, your workplace, even beyond. So why does women's health matter? And why are we only talking about women today and not men? And this is because one of the greatest risks for women today is the health. There's a huge increase in heart disease globally, and it now kills twice as many women um, twice as many women as breast cancer does each year. And the cause of this is primarily lifestyle factors. It's been proven that lifestyle factors, such as lack of good quality sleep, unmanaged and high stress, excess alcohol, lack of exercise, poor diet, smoking, um, you know, all put you at a greater risk of developing diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, 
heart disease, blood, um, high blood pressure, and many types of cancers. And for women who, you know, juggle in many cases, the, being a primary carer along with building their careers and pursuing their own ambitions, these things put women at an even greater risk. And then what about the biggest killer of women in the UK? And this is dementia. And you can see there on the screen, nearly double the number of women than men died of dementia in 2022 in the UK. But only 1% of dementia is as a result of genetics. All of the diseases that lead to the onset and then you know, rapid progression of dementia, things like diabetes, obesity and heart disease are on the rise. And they're those lifestyle diseases that I've just called out. And the growth trajectory for women on those diseases is scarily growing at a very fast rate. So, you know, the world is changing and we're seeing women really, you know, come out and, and really try to help drive that change and, and be um, a catalyst for change, which is amazing, whether this is politics in business in technology. But despite that progress we're making, we're still facing very unique challenges with win women's health that can really hinder that impact. So it is more important than ever for women to prioritise the health and well-being. Now, we're seeing the age that people live to grow, and it's expected that by mid-century, so not too far away, you know, 27 years, there'll be double the amount of adults than what they are now, 1.6 billion globally. So this is a huge demographic shift. It's, you know, the, one of the biggest shifts that, that we're seeing in human history. But while we can celebrate the fact that on average, our life expectancy has gone up 20 years from where it was just in 1960. So we've seen this rapid increase. Our health span hasn't grown at the same rate. Women are expected to live on average with 22 years of poor health, which is quite a scary thought. And they also live with more illness and disability than men do. And we're all here to make the most of our life. You know, we all want a good life. We want to have full mobility, have good cognitive function so that we can choose what we want to do for those years that, that we have here. You know, we want to thrive and feel fulfilled right through our life, not just for those, you know, 62 years that we might be in good health or 64 years. Now, we know that women have been the backbone of society. They do play an important role in shaping the world. And I love this quote from Michelle Obama. She's um, one of my dinner party wish list guests because I think she's just a phenomenal woman who speaks so, you know, um, strongly and, and just passionately about the role that women play in our world and, and the changes that we're trying to make. But, you know, despite what we're seeing women do and, and trying to do more of, it, it really is a struggle when the health isn't, isn't good and, and we're faced with these risks. Because we do need women to be able to contribute to society. And when women are juggling the roles as mother, as caregiver, as um, you know, a partner, professionally as well, and we, we know the shifts in these roles haven't got, well, the shifts in the kind of caregiver and um um parental type roles haven't shifted as quickly at the same speed as what they have professionally so women for example are still taking on three times as much domestic work than men and the caregiving is even more than that so you know combining all of those roles together is a challenge for women so if she if you aren't healthy and strong then you can't fulfill all of those roles to the best of your ability and then when it comes on to leadership, we know that women are massively underrepresented here. Only 30% of leadership roles in the UK are held by women. And something that I find astounding in the US is that there are more men named John in leadership roles than there are women, which is just like a crazy, I find that quite a funny um, quote to use because it puts a bit of perspective into it. You know, and, and so it's not just the barriers that are in place institutionally, and professionally for women, but the fact that 
poor health can exasperate the problems that women have when we already generally can doubt ourselves and lack confidence in our ability you know so when we aren't then feeling well physically and mentally it exasperates things like that so that you know we end up with even lower self-esteem and self-worth so we hold ourselves back and I'm sure some of you on here can resonate with with this at a time in your life or maybe people who you work with or have in your team so by taking better care of themselves and building that confidence and self-worth, women can take on more of those leadership roles because they want them. You know, they know that they're capable of it, that they're able to do those roles and provide and, and contribute. And a big thing as well is that women, you know, we want women to be role models for others. When I worked at Nike, one of the things we talked about a lot was that there were very few female role models for girls and that wasn't just in the sports arena if you think about who you admire which female you look up to I'd guess that you're probably going to struggle and I know certainly when I've asked my daughter before and I actually did some market research on this um as, as part of something I did when I was at Nike with my daughter and our friends so there were probably about 11 or 12 at the time I asked them um quite a few questions and one of them was about role models and and they couldn't answer I think the odd one had given a pop star who I didn't know but there was just you know it kind of oh, what but if you ask boys of the same age or even men you know they'll come up with a number of people like that because it there's obviously you know a lot more very well-known male um, role models, whether it's, you know, sports athletes, whether it's people in business, in leadership, in government, political type roles. But for women, you know, and girls, that isn't there. So we need to be helping to drive that so that we can, you know, give those role models for girls so that they want to grow up and step into leadership roles to be sports, you know, people or to be, you know, someone who's driving change in science and technology or even in entrepreneurship. Um, in the UK, the workforce is made up of just over half of women. So we're a huge part of our you know, workplace and economy. We play a massive role. But at the moment, there's 700,000 women over the age of 50 on current sick leave. And many of these are citing depression and anxiety and stress is their reason. And a recent report from Deloitte actually found that 53% of women said they were more stressed than 12 months before. And 46% of women were feeling burnt out. So really, you know, high numbers. And when you put that into perspective of being, you know, 51% of our workforce in the UK, that's a lot of people affected by, you know, their health. And we, all, we know that women, all women are going to experience menopause in their lifetime. And so given the way that we have in the workplace and society, it's a huge factor of health, the menopause, that we need to have more awareness of and better support, not just for the women who are experiencing it, but for everyone around them as well. So if you were to Google women's health and its risks and impact, these are just some of the facts and stories you'll find. Now, I think we can share the deck afterwards if anyone wanted to read more into these I'm not expecting you to read them all but I just want to give you these headlines because it's so you know profound and and quite alarming what you find when you do google it but just a few call outs I want to make is that you know women are more likely to take time off work due to female specific health problems and um, more time off work overall but also, they struggle with specific female health problems like pregnancy, you know, menopause, menstrual bleeding, endometriosis, things like that. And almost a million women in the UK alone have left their job because of menopausal symptoms. There's some very, you know, very alarming facts and statistics when you start diving into this about the number of women who feel they get to a point in their age that they're no longer able to cope in the jobs that they are you know that their their doubt in themselves grows their lack of ability in themselves grows that they just struggle to perform they you know back away and this is where we we see you know that gap in leadership between men and women as well so it's really you know draining our talent pool and and that's one of the struggles I know Dawn talked about for the STEM industry was you know retaining and recruiting top talent so you know this is something that is so important to our economy but like I say also to help model to that younger generation 
Now, in the UK, it's expected that most women reach menopause by 51 and women over 50 are the fastest growing demographic in the workplace you know and as I've said state pension age is rising and we know that people are living longer so there's going to be more people in the workplace who are experiencing menopause and we need those women to be healthy and strong because of everything I'm sharing with you about the value that that they often contribute to us. Um, another call out is that in the UK, we could be losing up to 14 million working days a year due to the menopause, which again, obviously has significant impacts. And outside of menopause, women in general struggle more with their mental health than men. And we're seeing a real rise in this in younger women as well. You know, young women are cited as, as um, having 26% um, more likely of experiencing mental health disorders compared to only 9% of men, which is still a big number, but it's a big difference between men and women. And, you know, we know that women are calling out to their employers that they want more help, they want more support, they want to work, you know, especially as they, they reach those older ages where they might not have worked previously in younger, um, older generations. So, you know, women want change they want to be able to contribute and they want the right support to be able to do this so that they can live the life that they want you know I'm sure all of us here we want to be able to have you know the jobs or the businesses that we want and to be able to you know achieve our goals and, and bucket list as we go through our life so I know I've probably just completely blown your mind with with all of that and that was intentional I want you to to feel like that because this is powerful stuff this is real this is what's happening out there you know so we need to be more aware because we are ill-informed about it whether it's menopause whether it's heart disease whether it's just general you know health um span and lifespan we need to be informed so that we can take control and make decisions about our health because you know we all want to feel healthy so I hope you know this is giving you some food for thought and just helps to you know, get those, those cogs turning about yourself in your own life and, and your health. So this slide, I think, really helps to illustrate the importance of taking care of yourself and what would happen when you're not. So I want you to think about this as I share these two examples. So you're either on the left in firefighter mode, you're reacting to whatever comes up, you're waiting for the alarm bell to go off and then you jump to it. So, you know, you, you struggle maybe with the weight and pressure of it all and you're literally just trying to put those fires out. But, you know, you're trained to do certain things and then you can jump to action and, and do those things and then just, that's it, it's done. I, I feel, you know, kind of safe and secure now. So you're existing in this example, you're a firefighter literally responding. So you were reacting to what comes up, you're surviving, getting by as best you can, and you just basically jump into action when the crap hits the fan. Or you're the captain of the plane, you're calm, collected, you're in control, and you've got a roadmap for life so that you can navigate yourself on the journey you want to take. You know where you're going and you're able to land yourself in the right place because you've equipped yourself to be able to do that. And you believe in yourself, you know, you know that you're more than capable, you're in charge. And so you feel like you can trust yourself to take the right course of action, whatever that is and whatever comes next for you. So if you want to share in the chat you're more than welcome to to pop in there which one are you are you the firefighter or are you the captain which I also call the CEO so you're, you're the chief executive officer of your life so firefighter or captain now I know from my own experience that when you put yourself too low down in your priorities it's going to have a negative impact it's, it's going to impact your physical, mental, emotional health. And then this impacts your overall well-being. So it makes you feel out of control, unhappy, anxious, stressed, tired, overwhelmed, and like you're just living rather than existing. You're existing, sorry, rather than just living. Now, I used to push self-care aside because I had to put all my energy into my job. And then the stuff I had to do outside of work, I, I ran everything at home. So I was definitely in firefighter mode. And, you know, I carried a lot of guilt because of that. I had to work away a lot. My daughter went to breakfast clubs, holiday clubs, um, you know, after school clubs. I worked away from home and missed things some of the time, fortunately. As anyone knows who's an employee, you're limited with holidays. Um, you know, and I, I was 
traveling with work, then coming home, having to do all this stuff at home. And I just felt like I was caught in a spin cycle. And I talk about this a lot and it, it it resonates with people you know think of a washing machine and how fast it goes on that spin cycle so Monday to Friday was a spin cycle but then when the weekend came there was no pause it was just the same it was just slightly different things that that I was doing in that spin cycle so naturally because of this I was in a constant state of stress I suffered with anxiety I had panic attacks and I felt overwhelmed and really unhappy a lot of the time and I did feel like I was out of my depth in a lot of the jobs that I did throughout my career so this went on for years and because of this I had really low confidence and self-esteem and then the spin cycle was just you know pulling me down lower and lower until I hit rock bottom but then I learned through the importance of taking care of myself and, and starting to prioritize my health, why self-care is so important. And I learned as well that self-care is much more than a hot bubble bath and putting a candle on and all the other things that I used to think, you know, only mums who don't work and have a luxury of staying at home get to do. And, and that changed. And I realized it was so much more than that. And I could do a whole other workshop just on self-care and what that is. But the kind of what I the, the main point I want to share with this is that self-care is everything you know when when you think about what I've just shared so far with women's health and the opportunity women have to drive change and shifts and growth in our economy and, and culture you know taking care of yourself is everything to lead in a great life for you but also for others as well and you know putting the right habits in place which is is what I started to do and learned is so powerful this is your key to being able to live a really healthy happy strong life both now and in your future so you know that that helps you to become the captain so I shifted from firefighter mode to being in control being that captain and CEO of my life so I've just got a little poem that I'm going to read out, a very short one that I want you to think about for the, the quote that I've got on this slide here. And, and if you want to, you can close your eyes, try and think about it maybe as a little vision as I read through it. So think about a beautiful plant. Too little sun and water and it won't do well. Too much sun and water and it won't do well. It needs balance. It requires the perfect amount of shade, sun, water, soil, temperature, placement, and nutrition to thrive. You are no different. To live well, you need the perfect amount of rest, hard work, challenge, fun, peace, and love. If all you had was dark times, you wouldn't be able to grow. In the same way, if all you ever had was sunshine, you'd never become your best self. You're a complex being with complex needs. Treat yourself as such. Create your life rather than live it. So hopefully that's pretty powerful for you to just think about it in, in that sense of a plant. So I just want to kind of pause here before I move on to the next slide. And again, if you want to contribute anything, even come off mute, you're more than welcome to. Just to ask, like, what's coming up for you? Are there any specific emotions, any thoughts? You know, does anything resonate with you? Have you had experience of, of anything that I've shared? Is this something that's, you know, impacted you in your own life? Is it something that's impacted someone in your family or maybe in your team or workplace um if if you work with others in a business so yeah anything that's that's coming up there I'd love you to share that yeah Susie was saying previously you're the firefighter one it's hard to get started yep it is um re Helen resonate a lot with where you are right now okay yeah so the Two biggest things that I know people struggle with are time and then it's I don't know what to do. And often that's because you've tried before, you know, you've tried different things to make yourself feel better. And for women, that's often diet and exercise. 
And because they haven't worked out, maybe they did, but short term and then things went back to how they were before. Or, you know, you you just didn't manage to achieve the goals that you had in those areas. You just think it's too hard. You know, I don't know where to start. I've failed before. And again, it's those limiting beliefs that come through, which, you know, impact in your self-worth and self-belief so that you think, it's kind of that second person example I gave about the, the thoughts on health. It's like, well, yeah, I know it's important, but I will get to it because I've tried and I just don't know what to do and I'm too busy and I don't know how to start. And, and those thoughts are so powerful in holding us back, not just with our health, but then, as I've explained in, you know, what you do in your life, what it is you're, you, you're getting after and in, in the things that you want to achieve to, to create the experiences and memories for yourself through your life. So it sounds like, yeah, it's resonating a lot. Um, yeah, create your life rather than live your life. Powerful, isn't it, Claire? Yeah, um, we often make excuses we don't have time, but make time, yes. And, you know, I, I, I don't like generalising because I know not everybody and every life is like this. But as women, again, this is, it, it's human nature. It's how we've evolved. And we haven't, as I said earlier, we haven't evolved um, away from this yet in terms of still believing that we are the primary caregiver home you know runner provider or all, all of those things when it comes to more of the care aspects of our family and lives and um, and so you know it's much more natural and, and easy for us to to default to care and, and doing things for others rather than ourselves and it, back to that captain analogy um, you know, I talk about putting your own oxygen mask on first, because if you can't take care of others, if you aren't good and strong and well and capable, then you aren't actually able to help others be and feel the way that they want to be, especially when it, it you know comes to our children or maybe our partners. So, you know, it, it's something that that a lot of women struggle with guilt about because they feel as though prioritizing themselves means that they're not caring as much for the other people they love and the other things they have in their life that are important but actually it's the reverse because you need to be strong and able to care for others so that whole oxygen mask analogy is something to try and help so maybe at the end if anyone's got any specific questions about something you're trying to do which we're going to kind of use an example I can try and help you with a little bit with that yeah thanks for sharing that I really appreciate that um, so this is my success cycle, and I think this visual is a really great tool to use to help pull together what we've been talking about. So, you know, it, it's very simple. I know it's not easy to do, but it's very simple in that when you build strong health, you feel strong and well, and then it impacts your self-worth so that you value yourself and you know your worth. And that is so important because only then do we feel empowered to want to do things differently? So we, when we were, when we have self worth and we value ourselves, then we want to prioritize ourselves because we get what it's going to do. Well, when our self worth and self belief is low, that's when we're just stuck in that cycle of not putting us first and putting other people. So building that self worth then leads to your confidence growing. And when you feel confident, again, it lifts that empowerment. It lifts those, you know, feelings of being in control of being the CEO of your life. Remember, you know, that captain analogy. And then when you feel this and you feel like your life's a success because you're leading it, you're driving it and living the way you want, then you feel happy. And happiness is what we all want, isn't it? We're all striving for it, but we often look for it in things like car a new house maybe a holiday or a number on the scales even you know the money in the bank you think when I've got that then I'll be happy but I truly believe that when you are living life with intention and you're feeling control and it doesn't mean that things are always going to be rosy you know as I said in that little poem there will be times that are dark and more difficult but because you're in control and you know who you are and you value yourself you can still continue to feel happiness and that to me is what success is so I know you all want to make you know um changes and you've come today for a bit of support in helping yourself to do that so 
you know, I really want you to begin to make some change and, and say that it is possible to make it happen for you and that you can close that gap between your current health and, and your ideal health. And it's all about small steps. And this is why a lot of people struggle because they go all in too quick. You know, they, they approach it with the huge goal and want to be there really quick. And obviously we're wired for instant gratification and rewards. So when it doesn't happen, again, we think we're failing and it's too slow. And so what's the point? Small steps are the key. Now, I use a um, system in my coaching called WELL, which is W-H-E-L. And that helps to guide my clients through getting clarity about what they want to change, getting in control, and then consistency through the sustainable habits. And it all starts with, you know, you and knowing what you want to change and why this matters to you. And this is the first small step to change. So I want you to think about that gap that you had at the start between your health and how you prioritize it now and how you would like to. And think about one thing just one small thing that would help you to close that gap, just to use for, for yourself as I walk you through this example. And if you've got one again that you want to share, please do so. Um, and we're going to just kind of think about how you would start to build a habit for that by taking small steps. And the small steps are these actions that I've got on the slide here. So really gradually taking small steps to build a habit that becomes a part of who you are now I've, everything I do I focus on through the lens of habits because they're your superpower so all of the workshops the programs the coaching that I do are really you know built around habits and there's so much that we, we can do on habits to really understand how habits form how you break habits how you create habits why mindset's so important to habits. But right now, we'll just focus on, on this little example. So if you've got, oh, Susie, amazing reading Atomic Habits. Yeah, I, I base a lot of my habit coaching from that. It's unbelievable. And, and if you're enjoying it, I'm not sure if you have, but listen to um, him on podcasts as well. He's done some really good podcasts. Um, I'm sure there was one with Stephen Bartlett on the Diary of a CEO not too long ago. And he's been on the High Performance podcast um, as well. That was a good one, but he's great. Yeah. So if anyone's interested in, in these, you know, reach out and I can suggest books. Or pod I'm a massive podcast fan. So um, I'm always listening to podcasts. So think about that thing you want to change and then ask yourself, why does this matter to you? And then ask yourself, you know, if I was to make this change and my life was different because of it why is that important to me so it's asking those why questions in slightly different ways to really dig into why it matters to you like why is now the time to make the change why is it that this is something you want in your life why would it make a difference not just to you but the other people around you and I say that the why is the biggest little question you can ask yourself. I've wrote um, a blog on it and I've spoke about it on my podcast because I, I know that the why is what helps you to get motivated initially, which is where a lot of us struggle with saying, I'm not, not just, I'm just not motivated enough. So it helps get you off the starting block. But most importantly, it helps to anchor you to why you want to do it when things get tough because the will that's life it's going to get hard sorry I just need to cough <clears throat> I started to get hay fever and I get really clogged up so I've got a really croaky um throat today so then you take one step forward and I like to encourage you to take a first step in the next 48 hours I'm all about action so think about that and then you take another step and those small steps build momentum which is really important because when you start to get feel the momentum and say that things are changing it builds that trust in yourself again it builds that self-worth and then that all builds you know competence that you're able to do it's the way you might have failed before now you're saying actually I can do this yeah you know I'm, I'm doing small things and I'm gradually moving closer towards what I want and because of the momentum it helps to um keep you going it gives that motivation and then this is how we build habits this is what forms habits because habits are a part of you if you think about what you do most days and and on average well over 40 percent of everything you do both in your thoughts and your actions are ha habitual you know you want habits that you want to create new for your health to just become a part of you so it's all about flow it's about them 
being part of your identity. And that's what habits are essentially. Habits are your identity. So think about taking that quick action, what you can do. Um, you know, and a big part is to celebrate your success as well, because this is so important. Science has proven that when we acknowledge our achievements, when we reflect on what we're doing, then it really does help, again, to build all of those great things I'm talking about, like confidence, self-belief, and then that helps create that ripple effect. So just to remember that you are an output of your habits. They help you become the person you want to be. And that's why if you think back to where you've tried and failed, maybe it's because you weren't building the habits. You were just going all in trying to get the result. So just to wrap up, um, I want to, um, yeah, just kind of give you these three unlocks and help you to be really clear on the takeaways that I set out at the start, which were, understanding why women's health matters, to know why you need to value yourself and build your self-worth and to be inspired by that ripple effect that comes when you start to take action to take better care of yourself throughout your life. So you can see on here, there's three unlocks and um, that I believe lead to success. And as I said, success, I think, is, is the happiness that we're, we're looking for. So the first is being that CEO, being that captain of your life, you know, investing in your future. So rather than just existing and reacting day to day is, is you know, knowing that by the actions you take now for your health, you're going to help yourself when you're older. You know, there's no point this is a bit of reality check here there's no point going all out now and, and living great but then when you whatever age 55 60 that's it you know life changes and I've I've had personal experience of this in my family unfortunately with my mom and her health and she was it has been a huge part of why I do what I do now so you know remember you're building your own wellness toolkit it's unique to you it's what you need and um, again, I do whole other sessions just on this alone about, you know, building the habits and the tools that support the things that you need right now in your life. And know that this changes. We're always going through seasons in our life. So, you know, you're going to tweak things and adjust depending on where you are and what's happening to you and what you need. But remember that you are worthy. OK. The second is to be intentional about how you want to live. You know, why does that matter to you? So, so some of you said you feel like you're just kind of existing maybe on that hamster wheel in that spin cycle. You know, again, we all have one life. So get intentional about how you want to feel and live that and then act in alignment to those values. And just, you know, remember that it is about those small steps to achieve those small, um, those new goals. And then your confidence is a huge one. You know, when your confidence grows, so does your power. And when you feel empowered, then you will try things. You will take steps outside of your comfort zone. And that's what further builds your confidence and your competence. You know, a vision um, a tool is something that I really find very powerful when clients are looking to, to change. This is something you can do really easily for example, when you just start to wake up on a morning, you could just get that picture into your mind of what you want your life to be like and really attach yourself to that. You know, that's your why. That's why you're making these small changes to work towards that big life vision that you have. And remember that your brain doesn't know the difference between reality and fiction. And that's why visioning is so powerful, because your brain believes that that's that's what's going to happen. That's your life. That's how it is. So that's how you take steps and action and goals and you create that. And manifestation, if anyone's into that, you'll know about that. That's all kind of linked to, to this as well with, with your brain and the power of, of your mind. And the great thing is that these three things are all in the link. They all support one another. And so when they come together again, you know, you get that huge ripple effect that I've talked about. So... I know that when you take care of your health, you're going to feel strong, capable and resilient. You believe in yourself and you're willing to try new things. Go after your dreams, drive change and new opportunities. And I've shown, you know, women have such power in the world. Right now, there is so much opportunity and potential. So, you know, don't think small, think big. You, you know, can have huge, profound impact. We can really make positive change when we are, you know, healthy, strong and believe in ourselves. I do believe that that's possible. 
So let's come together and, and make this happen. And I want to leave you with this quote from Michael Jordan, a, a great um, athlete, an iconic Nike um, athlete. And think, which one are you? You know, are you the person wanting to make it happen? Are you wishing it would happen? Um, or are you actually getting out there and are you making it happen for you in your life? So I just checked the comments. I haven't said, yeah, it's easy to drop back into those habits when trying to change. Exactly. Yeah. And the reverse of, well, breaking bad habits is the reverse of building new habits. And something to remember, and this leans into that bit about self-compassion and being kind to yourself, is that bad habits never go away, ever. They are stored in your brain like a file. Imagine one of those old fashioned metal cabinets with the pull out drawers and the filing um, system in it, the paper hanging files. Those habits are there forever. You need to replace them with other things, with new habits. That's how it works, basically. So, you know, when you do fall back, it's about not being tough on yourself and not giving up. It's about staying, you know, connected to that why, to that vision, to that goal that you've got. And, and that's, you know, obviously a big challenge that people do have but that's kind of you know how it works um and and obviously something that I dive into a lot in in the coaching and um services I offer so just to kind of finish off before we ask some questions um I offer a range of services for individuals and for businesses and um, so I work with with you to understand your specific needs what it is you're challenged with what you're trying to achieve and find the right solution for you I work in person and um, virtually as well. And, you know, I can um, travel anywhere if there was somewhere nice and warm. I would love to go there right now because <laughs> we're facing yet another washout bank holiday weekend by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, reach out if you want to have a chat about anything. There's a QR code on here, which links to the services page on my website. Um, and I've got in here my um, social media links as well so I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram primarily I have a weekly podcast live healthy now which is all about unwrapping what health means and helping you to build healthy habits and I cover a whole array of topics to really help you see that health is is everything it's everything that touches you in some way and it's about finding what you need and works for you so as I said my vision is to normalize healthy habits that kids grow up valuing themselves to live a healthy happy life and I do believe that by supporting people to embed sustainable healthy habits into their lives then we will have that much needed impact on the younger generation and I know absolutely know 100% that by focusing on women and their health and starting to shift that narrative about what healthy really means that we can start to create ripples and accomplish the changes that we all want for more equality equity and ultimately to live longer and um, happier fulfilled lives so let me um stop sharing are oh, you welcome, Helen? I'm pleased that's being useful. Yeah, food for thought. Great. So, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. We've just got a few minutes left. So if there's anything that you're specifically struggling with, I don't mind helping out there. The only thing I really had, Nicola, was like, in terms of what would you say to someone who was a bit sort of scared of injury on commencing exercise? Ooh. So, like, occasionally mm -hmm. I get the urge to run. I mean, slowly and not for very long. Um, but I did that, you know, a month or so ago. I just went out for a run. I used to run a little, like, used to jog a, a little mm. when I was younger. And then I sort of did my knee in, and that was me for a month. And, you know, that, that then had ripple effects to, to childcare. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And um, I encourage everyone to move their body. Movement's one of my five pillars. And as I said, I'm a qualified PT and I know the value of moving. But it's back to you doing what is going to work for you. And, you know, this might not always be that there's a risk of injury. It might just be that mm, I can't spend that much time doing that because then I'm going to not be able to do that. And that's still important. So it's kind of that balance. And if you do have something that means you're prone to an injury from running maybe you need to try and find something else or we, you know obviously I'd need to understand a bit more about physically what's going on with your knee but even to start off with walking you know and and, and varying the walking so that you 
do faster mm -hmm. spurts, you do uphill, try some steps and try out how it feels because it's back to that all or nothing approach that a lot of people have when they've got a goal and fitness is an obvious one many people are like I'm gonna get fit I'm gonna you know go to the gym and I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna go five times a week and then within three or four weeks they're either bored because they don't really know what they're doing and it feels bloody hard work or perhaps they've injured themselves and and then that's it they've been put off so you know it's about finding what works for you I have back problems. My back's gone a couple of times. I, I was at the osteopath a few weeks ago. Um, but I and I don't really like running, I must say, but I do try and run once a week because I love the mental challenge of running much more than the physical. Um, I love high impact stuff, but I've had to tone it down a bit because of the problems that I know I've got. And so it's like kind of adjusting and finding what might work with you. If you know that, you, you know it's not like you're just scared because some people are scared irrationally you know and just think oh I'm really scared I, you know I might do this and I might do that and obviously you can work through that mentally but if, if you're scared because you have got a history of, of problems then I would you know either build up very gradually mm -hmm. and fail your body see what happens how it works or don't do it you know if if you're at a point where that has been a, a chronic problem and you've seen someone about it and it can't be repaired fully, then maybe, you know, adjust to something else that might be cycling. Or, you know, it could be just something completely different, swimming even or boxing. Obviously, running's very easy for a lot of people because it's free. You can just, you know, do it from your home. You don't have to go somewhere. And it, you know, gets us outside, which is obviously so beneficial. Mm, definitely. Thank mm. you. You're welcome. Yeah. Great. Oh, well, I, I saw a few people obviously dropped off, um, which is fine. So, yeah, if there aren't any other questions, thanks again, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you're feeling inspired to, you know, believe in yourself and, and know your own power. And, yeah, reach out if there are any questions that pop up or thoughts afterwards. Thank you yeah, so you're much. You're welcome. Sarah. You're welcome.